There's an image going around on social media, and especially the social media accounts of high school coaches and uh, shooting coaches, that shows um, some stats from 82games.com that, uh, you know, in the NBA, something like less than 19% of shots are taken after three or more dribbles. And then it shows the various uh, points per shot um, for after zero dribbles, one dribble, two dribbles, etc. And essentially, the more dribbles there are before a shot, the lower the point per shot. So the implication and, and what's being implied by these coaches, um, or in some cases flatly stated, uh, is that players need to spend less time dribbling and more time shooting. Um, something I agree with. Um, I, uh, and some of the criticism by the shooting coaches was kind of taking a shot at you know, workout guys or guys who spend a lot of their time you know, working on the fancy dribbling moves. Um, something I kind of talked about yesterday. Um, so in one sense, I agree with what they're saying. Uh, you know, I, I think there is an overemphasis on dribbling, um, and especially dribbling without a purpose. Um, so not uh, to create a shot or not to create a pass, but just randomly dribbling. Um, and so I, think, I do think more time should be spent shooting. However, um, I can make the same argument towards... Uh, a lot of these shooting coaches that they're making towards uh, the dribbling coaches or the workout guys um, or just the basic practice habits of players um, because I could come up with a graphic that showed that uh, you know very few shots are taken without a defender somewhere within 10 feet of the shooter and you know very few if any shots are taken by one player um, consecutively in, say, less than two seconds. Uh, but that's how we practice. The shooting coaches, um, and oftentimes high school coaches as well, will do block practice where one player is shooting, you know, shot after shot after shot, uh, you know, to try to maximize repetitions and without a defensive player on the court. And so if they're going to criticize uh, dribbling drills uh, because they lack kind of the the game context or the game applicability, uh, I could easily criticize the shooting drills for the same thing. They lack the game uh, context or the game applicability. Because if you shouldn't dribble because most shots or the best shots come uh, you know, with less than three dribbles, well, almost all shots, best shots and worst shots, truthfully, uh, come with a defensive player somewhere within you know, 10 feet or 12 feet of a shooter. Uh, and uh, rarely do we shoot shots consecutively. So if it's not okay to go out and practice a lot of dribbling, um, again, something I'm not going to disagree with, um, I also think that we need to examine the practice habits of the shooting coaches and the high school coaches that are jumping on this bad bandwagon with the shooting coaches. And again, it's not that what they're doing is always wrong, um, just like practicing dribbling isn't always wrong. Um, but... If we're going to kind of look negatively at one thing, um, I think we have to apply the same standards uh, to another thing, even if it's our niche. So as a shooting coach, you practice shooting. Um, and so it's easy to you know, take a shot at somebody who does dribbling or something else, but what about your own practice and your own practice design? And you know, I think a lot of the issues with shooting practice is that we lack this game-like quality. We lack the constraints that are used during games. So we don't shoot often enough with defensive players present. We don't shoot often enough when there's a choice. Um, and we shoot uh, consecutively too often, which we don't shoot in games. And so because of these things um, that are present in practice and not, or are present in games and not present in practice, um, the shooting practice isn't game-like enough. Okay, And you can say, well, it's game-like because we shoot three-pointers and that's where we shoot or, you know, I run this offense and our players, you know, shoot off the same curl that they're going to shoot off in a game. And so it makes it game-like. Well, no. It imitates your offense, but it's not game-like unless those screens that you set get that player so open that it's like there's nobody else on the court. Um, and if you're telling that player, you know, every time you shoot, or every time you catch, you shoot regardless of anything else. 
There's no, you don't ever think, don't ever make a decision, don't ever change your mind. It doesn't matter where the defense is. You're catching and shooting every single time you catch the ball, uh, which would be great um, if you were that player. Um, and I actually have been in situations where a player was told that, um, not because he was such a great shooter, but because he was such a bad decision maker. Um, I worked for a head coach who told a, told a player who basically stood in the corner on offense that if he caught the ball, he either shot it or if he wasn't what, if he wasn't, uh, open to get a shot off, then he passed it right back to the guy who passed it to him. And then he kept standing in the corner for the rest of the possession. So uh, at some levels, I suppose that can happen. Uh, but for most players, uh, there is a decision to shoot. There is defense present. And you rarely shoot multiple shots in a row. But that's how we practice. And so if we're going to uh, look negatively and use stats to prove that some form of practice is inappropriate, i.e. too much dribbling practice or too many shots off the dribble because those are lower percentage or lower efficiency efficiency shots and they don't occur as often, well, I'm going to make the same argument that if we're practicing multiple repetitions in a row from the same spot, if we're uh, shooting without defense, uh, if we're shooting without any other choice, that's not a game-like shot. And I'm going to argue those don't occur in games. And so if, we're, if we should you know, reduce or eliminate our dribbling practice because it doesn't happen often in games and it's a low efficiency shot, I'm going to argue we should get rid, you know, reduce or eliminate these types of practice drills because they don't happen often in games. Um, and so I think it's the same argument. And if you want to make that argument against one thing, you have to be willing to make that argument against your own niche, um, i.e. shooting for a shooting coach. And so I do think that from a practice standpoint, we have to take into consideration what happens in a game, and we have to take into consideration all the constraints that affect a shot. And as much as people don't want to acknowledge it, the decision to shoot, the intention to shoot, affects the execution of a shot. So as I'm waiting, that decision, how open am I? Um, you know, where am I in relation to my defender? What's the score? Um, is this a good shot? Is it early in the shot clock? Is it late in the shot clock? Uh, is my team winning? Are we losing? All of these things affect that shot. And some of those things it's hard to practice because, you know, without a, you know, score, excuse me, score, or, you know, time in the game, shot clock, those things in practice, it's harder to practice all of those things. But we should incorporate some aspect of making a decision, whether I'm open, a teammate's more open, so on and so forth. And then the big one is the defense, because stats do show that the closer a defensive player is to a shooter, the worse that that shooter is going to shoot. So uh, we either need to change our perspective in terms of shot selection and never shoot a, a shot where a defensive player is anywhere close to us, or we have to practice and get players more comfortable with defensive players being in some range from which we're comfortable shooting whether that's three feet away, four feet away, five feet away. And without ever practicing with defensive players, how are we supposed to know where our comfort level is with a defensive player? So are we comfortable shooting and confident and our percentages don't decrease very much uh, shooting three feet with a defensive player three feet away? Uh, maybe. Uh, you know, I mean, I imagine somebody like Curry can shoot <clears throat> pretty darn effectively with a defender one foot away. Um, you know, there's probably other players who need six feet of space to really feel comfortable and confident shooting that ball. Uh, but we don't know that unless we practice with defensive players and we get more comfortable with defensive players in our area. Um, and making that decision of when I'm going to shoot and when that defensive player is too close to me uh, to shoot comfortably and confidently. So, um, again, I'm not trying to knock the shooting coaches. I'm just trying to point out that if they're going to make this argument against uh, you know, workout guys or dribbling guys or whatever, something that I tend to agree with them on, I think they just need to apply the same principles to examine their own practice and make sure that we're incorporating the same type of stats analysis and so, and so forth into our practice situations and acknowledge that rarely do we shoot multiple shots in a row, rarely do we shoot without a defensive player with that, you know, outside of, you know, some distance, however far it is, um, and rarely do we shoot without having to make a choice as opposed to the coach saying, okay, sh here's your pass, shoot. So we need to apply those same ideas of practice design to shooting practice that they want to, uh, you know, argue against, uh, you know, the dribbling or the workout guys.